bound changes now and then just have to plug in some numbers rather than change everything back to sine of 2x and then have to plug in numbers and then figure out sine of that again. You follow me? We don't want to have to do that. So when we have x equals pi over 8 and x equals 0, let's figure out what those things are. Some of you guys are zoning out. Don't zone out. Stick with me here. You use your u substitution, you plug your x in, and you figure out what u's value is. So here we'll have sine of 2 times x. Well, x in this case is pi over 8. How much is sine of pi over 4? Square root of 2 divided by 2. Very good. Absolutely right. You guys okay with the root 2 over 2? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's do the 0. I'll take care of the 0 for you. <laughs> sine of 2 times 0. I love this one. That's sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 1, right? Good. Just checking. I was really checking there. Yeah, it's 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So do you know your new balance? Let's do the substitution. Let's do it correctly. Let's substitute everything we can. We'll substitute for dx. We'll substitute for the sine of 2x. We'll also substitute for our bounds. So here's how the integral looks when we're done all our substitution. We go from where to where now? Where do we start? Zero. Zero to where? Zero to That's because we're going to change all this stuff in terms of u. That's why we did our changing bounds. Okay, is the sine of 2x to the fifth power still there? Can you please tell me what I have instead? People on the left. U to the fifth. Not just u, but u to the fifth. That became a u? Yes. U to the fifth. Do I still have the cosine of 2x there? Yes. Mm -hmm. As of right now, yes. Do I still have the dx there? No. No, that's our substitution right here. We're going to do du over 2 cosine 2x. By a show of hands, how many people feel okay with this so far? So far. Good. That's also with everybody. Okay. Tell me some nice things that happened. What are we going to do? Cosine 2x equals 1 half out. Uh, right there, you know for sure your substitution worked. You have nothing but use. You've already done your bound change. It's great. And do what else? Pull out 1 half. Pull out 1 half. Great. The 2's on the denominator becomes a 1 half. I like it. 0 to root 2 over 2, du. Now that is a nice, easy integral. The numbers you have to plug in aren't all great, but that's okay. Just plug them in. So take our integral, we're going to get... Don't forget about that 1 half. 1 half, u to the 6th over 6, I'm going to make this nice and neat before I evaluate. I'm going to get u to the 6th over 12. And do I have to plug in the x back into this thing before I evaluate? Why not? Because you've already taken care of it. I've already changed my balance. That's exactly right. Okay, so root 2 over 2, we're going to plug that in first, then we'll subtract and plug in 0. So root 2 over 2 to the 6th power over 12, minus 0 to the 6th power over 12. What's 2 to the 6th? It's how much? 2 to the 6th is 64. Now, root 2 to the 6th power is 2 to the 3rd, should be 8. So you got 8 64ths there as well? It's what, 2 to the 4th? Yeah. Root 2 to the 6th? 8. Because it's 8 divided by 2. It is 8, right? Yeah. That's going to be 1 8. It's going to be 1 8. Yeah. Am I way off or am I okay? No, you're trying. You're good. Yeah, the first one is 1 8 and then minus, yeah. 
1 8 over 12 over 1. Mm -hmm. Reciprocate and multiply. Okay, what I'm asking you, are you okay up to here? Are you okay up to here? After that, use your calculator, do it. I, I did it because it's uh, square root of 2 squared to the third. So square root of 2 squared is 2, then 2 to the third is 8. That's how I did it. And then 2 to the sixth, I had to have up that. That's, that's the 64, and then you start simplifying that. But that's the way you'd probably do this without a calculator. How many people understood what we just talked about? Feel okay with both methods? You can do it without changing bounds, right? That's pretty basic. Just makes you sub in before you evaluate. Now, changing bounds, a little bit more advanced of a concept, but it makes things easier sometimes. Nice, nice doing this off to the side. You don't have to really worry about it, and then you, you just use your U. Just make sure you don't. The worst thing you can do is substitute back in for X here, and then evaluate with your terms of U. That does twice the work with no reward. All right, let's continue a couple examples. Like I said, we got maybe two more to do. I'll show you how even and odd functions can play a role in calculating some integrals, sometimes very nicely. Uh, and then we'll get on to how to find the area between two curves. And you're going to find out that it's, it's just a small extension about what, we, what we've been doing so far. You guys ready for today? Let's do this. So looking at our first example, we got the integral. Of course, we're talking about a definite integral, so thinking an area. From 2 to 5 of 2x minus 5 and x minus 3 to the ninth power. Now, does that fit, fit your integration table? In order to make it fit, you'd have to distribute the x minus 3 to the ninth, and then foil, well, foil, oil, 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 first outside, inside, inside, all that. Not just foil, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> several, several times until you got this huge polynomial, then take the integral of each piece, which would be fine to do. It would take you a long time, but it is possible. And then you plug in the numbers to every single variable. That'd get a little tedious, right? So if that's the case, when it looks like that, you're probably going to try a substitution. Probably going to try a substitution. Now, one is not readily apparent because what I've told you about substitutions is normally, usually, the derivative has to be up there somewhere, right? It's got to be. If not, you need to manipulate the substitution somehow. So let's go ahead, let's pick a substitution, the one that you probably want to pick right now anyway, and then let's see if it works for us, okay? So pick a substitution right now. Go for it on your own. Using what I've told you, pick a substitution. Is it 2x minus 5 or x minus 3 that you picked? Good. Including the ninth power or not? No, it's usually just the thing inside the power that we, we take. Okay, well that's all well and good. U equals x minus 3. What do we do after that? This is pretty easy in this case. du equals dx. Hey, that's nice. That's a direct substitution from du to dx. However, when you look at the problem, we go from 2 to 5. We're going to change this in a second, by the way. I just want to make sure the substitution is going to work before I start changing bounds and doing things like that. I don't want to waste any time. I still have a 2x minus 5. And here I'm going to have a u to the ninth. And my dx will be a du. u to the ninth. Got it. dx is du. Got it. <coughs> What's the problem? Still That's the problem. You have a du, but you all have a u and an x. And, and these are still in terms of what? X. Those are in terms of x. So if we can make the substitution work, I'm going to go back and change the bounds. But I want to make sure it works first before I waste that time. You got me? When this happens to you, and it will, when it happens that you make a substitution and you know you made the right one, yeah, if you made this one, that certainly wouldn't work in any way, shape, or form. But if you know you made the right one, you go, wait a second, that's not falling out of my integral anywhere. Sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it means that you have to manipulate the substitution to solve for x and substitute in for x. And that's sometimes what it means. So when we have, especially when there's no power or anything, you can do that oftentimes, and we'll be able to distribute later. So it says, okay u equals x minus 3, can you solve that thing for x? How would you do it? Very good. Then what you say is, all right, then x is u plus 3, correct? Mm -hmm. Now we can make the substitution instead of x. Hey, what else could I write? Uh, u plus 3. Let's do that. Then it changes everything into u's. Okay. 
So our integral, I'll do the bounds in just a second. Our integral is 2, what else? Parentheses. U plus 3. I like it. Mm -hmm. Minus 5. And all that loud. Yeah. <laughs> Big old bracket because you're still multiplying by u to the ninth. Well, let's see if we can all follow that. Do you see where the u plus 3 is coming from, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -hmm. So we're using the substitution we just made to solve it for the other variable, solve it for x. That way we can substitute that in, and it changes everything into u's, and that's great. So we change that into a u, we have 2, that's u plus 3, and then minus 5. The whole thing still being multiplied by u to the ninth, so I still have to have that bracket. Now at the same time, since we're now all in terms of u, now's where we probably will at least change our bounds. That, that, that'd be a good thing to do. So why don't you go through right now and change your bounds for me. I'll do it on the board as you're doing it, but make sure you can do it. Don't just follow what I'm giving you. Pretty sure I got 2 and negative 1. Did you get 2 and negative 1? All right, so let's change our bounds down here. Instead of going from 2 to 5, we know that if we plug in 5, we're going to get 2. We know if we plug in 2, we're going to get negative 1. So that changes from 2 to 5. That makes it negative 1 to 2. Now, quick question, just to refresh your memory. When I get down to the very end, am I going to have to substitute back in for x or not? Because now we're in terms of u, and that makes it nice. So at the end, we're just done. We just have to plug the numbers in. That's why we changed the bounds in the first place. Okay, hey, what next? Come on, let's, we're on a roll. Before, I don't want to integrate right there. You want to simplify all that. You want to, yeah. You want to distribute out your 2, and then add minus your 5, and then multiply by u to the 9. Yes, we call that tedious algebra work. Ah. 2u plus 6 minus 5 then u to the ninth du. 2u plus 6, and then minus 5. Okay, well, that means we'll have 2u plus 1. Tell me something about this integral, what I absolutely have to do in order for this to work. Got it. I cannot just integrate the way it is. We found out that we can't separate integrals by multiplication. The only way to accomplish this is to distribute, and then we do the integral piece by piece. So when we distribute, please note that we're going to have same bounds, of course. We'll have 2u to the what? And very good, du. Hey, that's a whole lot easier. That's a whole lot easier to integrate than that one. That looks almost impossible. If you really, if you didn't have this to follow, you go, wait, wait a second, that substitution won't work. Try one anyway. See if it will work. See if you can manipulate like I did. And then maybe it will. If that's the case, shoot, it makes it a whole lot better to work with. And your bounds are even changed, so that's even nicer. So now we're going to integrate. Let's go ahead and integrate, and then we'll, we'll 